v meridian how you made my year when you told me that uh, the inspiration for your interest in science was watching the children's program how many years ago can i ask you will you do a how for me and will you tell me if you're still in love with science Hello, Fred. Yes, of course, I'm still in love with science. Um, science is what got me up here, and science is what's going to bring me back home safely. So uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, and great wishes, and, and hello to everybody who watches How. Tim, David Shookman, BBC News again. We're all getting lots of questions for you on social media, and a couple here are, how easily does water boil in space, and does the tea taste different up there? Well, the second part of your question is the far most important, so I'll answer that first. <laughs> the, uh, the tea actually tastes surprisingly good. Um, I was really delighted. Um, so uh, I have my tea and my method of using a kind of teapot and decanting it from one pouch to another is working really well. So uh, yes, I'm enjoying my tea up here. Um, and as regards to water, we, we don't boil water for any of our cooking. The, the water dispenser is only hot. It's about 87 degrees Celsius. But but we're in the same atmosphere here that you are back on Earth, the same pressure, same temperature, about the same humidity. The only thing that's different up here is we have about 10 times the level of carbon dioxide. Um, but So water will boil at 100 degrees up here, no different to back on planet Earth. Hi, Tim. Tom Cheshire from Sky News again. Um, you're looking fairly comfortable in zero gravity. Just wondering whether you had mastered the zero gravity somersault, and if so, whether you'd give us a twirl. Uh, I definitely haven't mastered it. I'll give you a trial and I'll show you just how bad it is. That was great. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another week. Tim, we watched you say goodbye to your wife and your two little boys. This Christmas Day, what will you be doing and what will you be thinking about? for both myself and Tim Coper is going to be this afternoon. Um, we have three main exercise devices, a bike machine, a running machine, and a weightlifting machine that uses vacuum cylinders to give the resistance so that we can exercise our muscles. Um, and really, I think, is, is great motivation because working out up here is a chance to listen to some music, to really you know, get some good exercise. And, and you feel like you want to exercise because you're spending all this time just floating. Your muscles are completely relaxed. You do feel like you want to actually get onto a bike or a running machine and do some work. Tim, Fred Dynage from ITV Meridian uh, yet again. Tim, tell us about the challenges that face you in the coming weeks and months, the things you have to do, the things you're looking forward to, the things you're dreading. Well, firstly, Fred, there's absolutely nothing I'm dreading. Uh, life up here is absolutely spectacular. Um, there are certainly some challenges ahead. We've got a very busy schedule, both with the science program, the visiting vehicles as well. We currently have a Cygnus vehicle docked, which we're unpacking. That's taking a lot of time to unpack that. Um, preparations for potential spacewalks, EVA, are ongoing. Um, and of course, with a, with a future SpaceX vehicle that comes up, there'll be even more science on board that too. So uh, plenty of work to do over the next six months. Tim, David Shookman, you've had some messages from some very interesting people, uh, Her Majesty the Queen and also Elton John. Uh, what was your reaction to that? It was absolutely astounding. Um, and again, as I said, I kind of felt a bit isolated. So I was catching up with all of this once I got on board the station and people were telling me, hey, did you realize you had a tweet from uh, Her Majesty, etc." So uh, I was absolutely blown away. It's, uh, it's a huge honor, obviously, to, uh, to receive that. And um, I'm just so glad that so many people across the UK 
have been enthused by this mission and um, certainly I'm so glad that so many of the uh, children have enjoyed it and I saw those wonderful pictures from the Science Museum in London and I just thought that was incredible, absolutely spectacular and phenomenal support. And, uh, you know, I would like to say a huge thank you, of course, to everybody who has supported me throughout this mission. Hi, Tim. Tom Cheshire from Sky News. Um, sleeping is, presents its difficulties. Astronauts get woken up by cosmic rays on their retina. Um, have you been bedding in in that respect? I think I've been fairly fortunate. Um, I'm enjoying sleeping. Uh, I haven't actually tied my sleeping bag down at all. I actually quite enjoy just floating around the, uh, the crew quarter. You're not going to go anywhere. It's very small. So you might occasionally bounce off a wall, but it's a very gentle nudge. Um, and uh, I have seen one uh, flash on the retina on my first night. Tim, it's Alok Jha from ITV News again. Um, you told me when we met in Star City a few weeks ago that you wanted to see the new Star Wars movie. Have you seen it yet? Or if you're not, when will you? No, we haven't seen it yet. Um, we're very excited about the Star Wars movie. I think we're all fans up here. And I believe that on the 21st, we uh, may get to see that up here on the space station. So a little bit later than everybody else. But hey, what a spectacular place to watch Star Wars. <laughs> Tim, are you still looking forward to doing a spacewalk now that you're up there in space? More so than ever, um, when I went to the cupola yesterday and uh, I watched a, both a sunset and a sunrise at different times and looking outside of the space station is incredible and to think that you might actually be out there on a spacewalk when that happens is going to be the, the most incredible sensation ever. Tim, Rob Olver, BFBS Forces TV again. Do you have any uh, special message for your former Army Air colleagues at Middle Wallop? I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody uh, at the Army Air Corps and Middle Wallet. There was both a launch party celebration going on and also I received a fantastic good luck message. So uh, really just to say thank you to everybody who has supported me. And again, I look forward to sharing this mission when I get back as much as I can with you. Tim, Fred Dynage for the last time. Amazing scenes, particularly in West Sussex at the launch. Great scenes at your old schools. Any Christmas message for all your many admirers in West Sussex, indeed, right across the South, right across the UK? Well, Fred, you know, in about an hour and a half, uh, we've got the most wonderful pass right over the South of England. So um, I will be sending lots of good Christmas messages, good luck, and uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Again, thank you very much for enjoying the launch and supporting this mission, and have a great Christmas and a great New Year to everybody back home. Tim, first and pop again, Deutschland Radio Kultur. Is you serious to run the London Marathon in space? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I think my first time on the treadmill is going to be over the weekend, and uh, so that will introduce me to my harness, but I've got until April to, uh, to get used to the system and to get uh, enough miles up so I'm ready for my marathon event, but I'm really looking forward to running the London Marathon definitely next year. Tim, this is Jules again. It was great talking to you. Everyone at ESC is delighted, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Jules. Great talking to you. And I'd like to say thank you to everybody there at EAC as well. And uh, thank you for all your help and support in getting me on board the International Space Station. I really do appreciate it. And have a great afternoon there at EAC. Bye-bye. Bye, Tim. Keep up the good work.
Okay, thank you everyone for coming. I think, I think that was a good, a very good call. Thank you very much.